In this video, we're going to cover the basics of working with the metallic material in Octane for Cinema 4D. And for this example, I'm using the Materials 01.C4D scene. So let's go into the Octane menu and open up the Live Viewer window and do a quick render. So you can see in the scene, I have my sci-fi structure and my four spheres with materials applied. So I have the Octane diffuse material applied to this sphere, a glossy material applied to this sphere, a specular material applied to this sphere, and the metallic material on this sphere. So let's take a closer look at the metallic material. So I'm going to choose Materials uh, Octane Node Editor. So let's select this metal material down here, take a look at its settings. So I'm only going to cover the settings that are most important to the metallic material, the settings that are shared between the metallic material and the other ones, specular, diffuse, and glossy. If I've covered them in the other videos, I'm going to kind of skip them or just talk about them very briefly. So if I select the material and take a look at the settings, of course, the most important setting is found under basic, and that is the material type. So make sure you have this set to metallic so that it is, in fact, a metallic material. Next, let's check out the diffuse settings. If I start changing the color for the diffuse here, we don't see any change right here. It looks exactly the same. That's because the metallic material does not have a very high diffuse component to it, uh, if any at all. Metallic materials tend to be smoother, so they tend to reflect light in more of a specular way. They don't diffuse the reflection into the environment like the diffuse material does. However, there is a reason we have a diffuse channel in the metallic material. This is where the specular map comes in. So I'm going to go in here and create a checkers texture and connect this to specular map. And when I do this, you can see now that diffuse color coming through on the surface. I'm going to go in here and add UV projection, UVW transform, and reduce the scale just so we can see. You see that sort of pale line color coming through? That's the diffuse color. So the diffuse channel shows up in the dark parts of the specular map. So the specular map controls which parts of the surface are going to have a diffuse reflection and which parts are going to have a metallic or specular reflection. So let's disconnect the checks texture and let's take a look at specular. So if I go into the specular section and I start changing the color here, we're seeing that we are tinting the reflections. And this is kind of like a traditional CG way of creating material. It's an artistic approach that's not necessarily physically accurate. You can see I'm making look kind of like a pale gold by adjusting these sliders here. So the way that the specular channel works in the metallic material is largely dependent on the IOR mode, the index of refraction mode. By default, this is set to artistic. So if I go down here and change the metallic IOR, nothing happens. It doesn't seem to affect much at all. So what does this mean? This means that, like the name artistic implies, we're taking an artistic approach to tinting that seed. Tinting that reflection is not necessarily physically accurate. So let's go back to IOR mode, and this time let's set it to IOR plus color. So in this case, what we're seeing now is the index of refraction, which I can control using this setting right here, if I set this to 1.1, you can see the reflections uh, is not very strong reflection. If I start to increase it, you can see if I put it to like 1.5, or let's say, I don't know, 1.8, you can see the reflections are a bit stronger. And if I go back to specular and start changing the color here, it's going to tint those reflections. So this is kind of like using the color of the specular channel plus an actual index of refraction. Uh, and then we have another setting right here, which controls the intensity of the Fresnel effect of the reflections. So if I start to increase this, you see the reflection gets much more intense. Fresnel, of course, is the quality uh, that gives sort of a realistic uh, reflection to the surfaces. For now, basically meaning that the reflections on the parts of the surface that are facing away from the surface tend to be stronger than the reflections that are at the center or the parts that are facing the camera. So 
but I start to lower this, like around here, you can see that there is most definitely a difference in the reflection here. The reflection here at the center is not as strong as the reflection on the edges here. And then I can increase or decrease this value. So this first field is the N value or the index of refraction. And the second field is the K value or the extinction coefficient, which I just think of as simply being kind of the strength of that Fresnel effect or that Fresnel reflections on the surface. So generally speaking, the higher the value this is, the more intense that reflection is going to be. So let's say you want to do something that's more physically accurate then you can set the uh, mode to RGB IOR. And what this means now is we have three sets of fields here. And each one of these refer to the red channel, green channel, or blue channel. And if you want to look up the proper values for a specific material, you can go to the website refractiveindex.info. And the way this works is that you want to find out the N and K value for each channel, red, green, and blue. So this means that you need to plug in the correct values for wavelength, and then the website will calculate the N and K values for you. So for the red channel, we can use 0.65. And for gold, that means that we're going to have a metallic red channel IOR of 0.25. And then we have a K value of 3.4242. Now we need to do the green channel. So that's going to be 0.55 for the wavelength. And that gives us an N value of 0.42108 and a K value of 2.3459. So go in here and I'm going to choose, and I'm going to type in 0.42. 108 and for K 2.3459 and then finally for the green finally for the blue channel I'm going to type in 0 0.45 and these are the values that we come up with so we have 1.3 oops 1.3734 and 1.7704. And we get this kind of white or light colored gold. That is a physically accurate index of refraction for gold, which is kind of cool. Now you can kind of go in here and fine tune this. If you don't mind being a little bit less physically accurate, you're looking for something more saturated, you can go in here and maybe play with the uh, K values a little bit. Uh, it depends on how what you're trying to achieve. Uh, but the nice thing about it is that you have three different ways to determine the index of refraction for the metallic material. Artistic, IOR plus color, or RGB IOR. So this is completely artistic. This is sort of a happy medium between artistic and physically accurate. And then this is the physically accurate method right here. So most of the rest of the settings we've already talked about in the other videos. So for example, roughness, we can add some roughness to the surface. Anisotropy, we can change the uh, sort of the directionality of the specular highlights. Remember, if you're going to use anisotropy, go to basic and choose for your BRDF model, Beckman or GGX. Oops. And you'll see that anisotropy start to actually do something. So we can adjust the uh, length of the highlight. And then for the rotation, if I put in, say, like a, a float, I can then use the slider to rotate the highlight. So for the sheen layer, if I start to, whoops, that's an isotropy. Let's go to sheen. If I start to adjust sheen roughness, and let's see a whole lot going on here. What happens if I attach a color to sheen? And let's set the color to bright red and go in here and adjust the sheen roughness. 
We still don't see much going on here. This is because the sheen has a stronger effect on the diffuse color of the surface. So if I plug that checks texture back into the specular map and then go and change the uh, color of the sheen, you can see here on the edges that color is starting to come through. Like let's say I make it a deep bluish color. You can see there it is. And then I can go in here and adjust the sheen roughness, which kind of spreads it out across the surface. So you're going to see that sheen in the diffuse uh, color of the surface and not necessarily in the metallic uh, reflections. So let's disconnect a specular map and sheen. And these other ones act very much like they do for the specular material. So the film layer, you can add kind of a rainbow kind of prismatic effect to the specular highlights that kind of simulates a thin film on the surface. And then of course we also have a film index of refraction as well. And for the most part, that covers the basics of working in the metallic material. Uh, when we take a look at the mixed material in the next video, we'll revisit the metal material and look at some of the other options of the ways that it can be adjusted in order to create something a little bit more interesting than a gold sphere.